the Austrian bread itself, and as I said already, when you're from Europe or from Germany, you might be familiar with that, has a brand history of over 110 years. So it's a very, very old brand, very traditional brand, stands for quality, um, for German technology, quality, and stands, and that's the special thing, for one product. So this is what most people have in mind when they talk about Osram. If I would go now on the street and say Osram, most people, and say, well, uh, paint something, they will paint a light bulb. So the brand history of 110 years is to a very, very big extent related to this one product, a light bulb. And that's also our problem, because uh, there was a new technology in place, it's called LED, and this new technology destroyed the traditional business model of Osram, awesome, because the LED is really what you call very modern word, a disruptive technology. Because with LED, the old business model didn't work anymore. A light bulb, a traditional light bulb, had a lifetime of 1,000 hours. This is, depending on how you use it, about a year. So every single year, you can sell a new light bulb. It's a nice business model. Problem is with LED, um, the lifetime extended to 15 to 25,000 hours. So every 15 to 25 years, you can sell a new product. That doesn't make too much sense, at least to a big extent. This is why we had to make big changes in our company, and really, the company itself changed it totally. We had to close down 11 factories, we um, had even have to lay off 16,000 people, and in the end, and this happened finally January this year, we carved out the whole lamps business. So Osram has nothing to do with light bulbs anymore. The light bulbs are now sold under the Osram brand, licensed to a partner who bought this business. So we don't sell light bulbs. The problem we have is, when you ask people on the streets, we are light bulbs. <laughs> and so this is the thing we had to work with when we went to CS. And again, when you think about Osram, and if you don't know Osram, maybe this hopefully changed after you heard um, my short uh, presentation today, you would ask yourself, also, what does Osram want at CS? Um, so, we also had to work on that, and because the problem is light bulb is a nice product, it's nice to have this, this uh, image still, because it's still standing for quality, for tradition, very, very nice um, parts of a brand positioning, so things you can be very proud of, and we are very proud of that. The only problem is it definitely does not stand at all um, for innovation. It does not stand at all for high tech. And this is what Osram stands for now. And this is what almost nobody is aware of, is he's not our direct customer. Because the Osram of today has actually nothing to do of the, with the Osram of 10 years ago. The picture you see here, here, um, is uh, a light up um, ice hockey ring, light up with LEDs, um, where we had a game with, with uh, textile illumination with the ice hockey players. Uh, was performed last December on the Zugspitze mountain in Germany. So we are in sports illumination for, for closing. Very, very modern product where you, can, where you can link it to your cell phone, which you can also use for security aspects. Totally new technology. It's nothing to do with light bulbs. Nobody's aware of that. We are enabling ER. There is no VR without Osram, because all the sensors in most of the VR glasses are Osram products. So the reason why a VR glass knows what you're doing with your head is an Osram product, but nobody's aware of that. Also, this is the St. Peter's Square in Rome. There would not be any new lighting on this square without our technology, without our um, light control systems and new LED luminaires we just installed the last December. Also, that is something most people would not connect with Osram. If you look at smart cities, the whole smart city approach, smart building approach, this is all our technology. So we also do a lot of software, we do a lot of uh, control systems, which is far beyond light bulbs, but that's also something most people don't know about. And, and now we come to CS. We are a very, very big producer of automotive technology. And automotive technology, and this is why I specifically don't say automotive lighting, automotive technology in this case is much more than only lighting. Yes, we are also the biggest lighting OEM uh, for automotive globally, 
But when you today go to, for example, BMW and purchase the new 5 Series BMW, you will find about 200, over 200 products from us being part of this BMW. And a very big amount of these products has nothing to do with what you would call lighting. It is lighting, but it is invisible lighting because it's sensors working with IR, with laser, and with a lot of other wavelength, which the human eye can't see. It's still lighting, but has nothing to do with the normal light bulb and the visible lighting everybody refers to as well. And so our big topic is how we can change this mind and how at a CS we can uh, explain to the people why Osram is there because, and just to, I don't want to go through this whole uh, scheme now, but just giving some examples, you might know there is a system when you change the lane with a car and there is this small indicator in a mirror which tells you that there is somebody left to you which you don't see. The system which enables that is from Osram. If you have a Tesla or another autonomous driving car which uh, is uh, able to, to drive autonomous, so without your help, the LiDAR system which enables that is built on our components. If you um, have a fitness wrist which measures your heart frequency, that's our product. If you have a new cell phone um, which unlocks by uh, your iris, the iris scan is our product. So this is the reason why we've been at CES. This is why the reason why we will be at CES next year as well. And this is also the reason why we started to talk with Lobacore. Because what was the task with CES? The task was let the very visitors experience what Osram awesome stands for today, not only see, but experience, and, and to be able to do that, make the invisible visible. Because a big part of our product portfolio is part of invisible lighting. And showing invisible lighting at a fair is very, very difficult in a traditional booth approach. And this is why we changed to an approach which was fully driven by augmented reality and virtual reality. And this is the solution Global Core had for us at CES. <clears throat> Thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, as Mark mentioned, challenge here, how do we make the invisible visible? And how do we talk about so many components you can't see and they're just interconnected in an actually an engaging way for audience members at CES, where there's a lot of competition for eyeballs and, and to get that attention. We're Globacore, we're an interactive studio based out of Toronto, but we do work all over the world. Um, generally, we say we create digital experiences for physical spaces. So that differentiates us from just the web shop or mobile shop or very specifically in the physical world of trade shows, museums, events, that type of thing. And I just put my Twitter handle and Global Course Twitter handle up there because all the uh, slides from this presentation are on there. If you want to go find them, you can download them. Our company was based on this idea of evolution evolving technologies from the beginning about 13 years ago, starting with web development and touchscreen design and moved into larger format multi-touch walls and tables, and then game design and then eventually VR. Uh, but throughout the entire process, the, the concept of evolution has always been there, and typically we need to innovate on, on top of these technologies because what we want to do with them doesn't really exist yet. And that, that's like an ongoing theme in our business. So when Osram came to us, we looked at our full uh, you know, evolution of technology where we can pick from, and we chose a selection of them that are here. We, we definitely wanted to utilize VR and AR to uh, harness that power and that engage in, uh, engagement power of immersion. Um, we wanted to tap into our large, full uh, room scale room scale virtual environments um, and we also needed to use some custom electronics because uh, there would be a benefit if we could somehow incorporate actual Osram products in the in the solution itself. Um, specifically throughout this evolution each of these sort of subsect capabilities uh, can be expanded on and VR in particular we've been evolving over the last few years and, and uh, how we actually utilize that so now we've come to this area where we're, we're mostly promoting and pushing a very large format virtual environment experience where we can take spaces as big as 60 feet by 30 feet and motion track them and have multiple users in it. 
And so that's our kind of most cutting edge opportunity, and that's what we basically uh, suggested to Osram. We, we work in and try to utilize this, uh, the, the bleeding edge technology offering that we had. I have a video here, or, or sorry, just a quick thing about what free roam VR is. Just as a capability, uh, the ability to take a large empty space as big as a warehouse and actually fill it with something and make that into an interactive experience. And at that point, the question just becomes what, what's in that experience and what's in that, that big black box. And this particular case, it was going to be a autom uh, representative automotive uh, vehicle so that we can show, like, showcase all the Osram parts within it. The challenges Mark mentioned earlier, we're trying to make the invisible visible. How do we show all these components that you can't see? Not only can you not see them embedded within the vehicles, but you literally can't see the product because it's infrared light. Um, we also had some guiding principles from a design standpoint um, to utilize contrast and, and uh, build a design language around the holistic experience, including the actual exhibit. And we have a very tight integration with uh, the Taylor Group, the exhibit house. So we have the benefit of working with them from the beginning to build these experiences. We also wanted to incorporate a concept of a reveal um, where we're trying to reinvent light using VR, or talk about reinventing light using the VR and AR technologies. This is the exhibit booth concept that came out of that design uh, language where we have both kind of dark and light intersecting each other. Uh, and as well as other lighting elements such as LEDs, lights that were all using Osram components that would kind of streak through the booth, and then a wireframe car, a physical car right in the middle, um, also intertwined with the lighting. And as far as the experience goes, a general concept that we would put the backpack computers and VR headsets on the people and ask them to walk from hotspot to hotspot and sort of bring them through a somewhat linear, yet still interactive experience that way. Um, additionally, on the side there, there are some augmented reality tablets. So the solution is create a large 30, by 30 foot by 20 foot motion tracked, multi-user, untethered virtual environment. Multi-user being important for throughput, something that we've made at core to our, all of our experiences because we work in this trade show world. You need to get many people through most of the ROI on so many brands is based on you know, how many eyeballs and how many people actually interact with those experiences. From a technical setup standpoint, this MSI VR1 backpack I was mentioning, that's kind of become core to our experience design these days. It has a 1070, uh, NVIDIA 1070 graphics card, so full, full discrete gaming graphics performance. Oculus Rift headset that we modified with the special LED system, um, and then a motion tracking system that was watching those LEDs. These LEDs, interestingly enough, were actually all supplied, or were manufactured by Osram, so we thought that was a nice tie-in to the old, whole thing, is that Osram technology itself was enabling this specific virtual reality experience. Plus these motion tracked augmented reality displays that we had around the car as well. Reason for this was we figured as engaging um, as VR is, there's a certain amount of people that aren't going to want to bother putting the headset on, and we just knew that was a reality, so we wanted to offer a second option to actually have the experience. So in this case, they could pick the tablets up and walk around the vehicle with some headphones on um, and just have a, you know, a bit more of a passive experience, but was, we were able to use the exact same content. From a conceptual side, we went through a few different creative ideas, but we eventually ended up around this idea of a country road at night. And if the country road at night could be our setting, then let's use that to describe all of these different technologies. And it actually worked out um, quite well for that purposes, because so many of these features present themselves in this type of environment. Plus, it created a somewhat a kind of dramatic scene for uh, the users. Again, things that are hard to see and talk about in real life, we're able to visualize with VR. Um, and there's a major difference between watching this on screen and 2D and actually putting your headset on and seeing the, 
you know, the full 3D nature of the environment. In terms of communicating, again, all of these invisible components and features, um, that the effect is uh, you know, quite you know, aesthetically pleasing, but, but communicates the concepts. And again, some more mild interaction, asking the user to reach out and touch the lighting assembly and having it pull out in front of them and, and go through each of the components explaining what they are. And other things that are hard to talk about, like the forward adaptive, adaptive lighting scenario, how the headlights actually avoid the oncoming cars and, and reorient themselves around corners. Uh, you know, generally, in summary, some like, key results of, of all the things that were just most important to us. That calculation of, you know, based on the throughput of a four people every 10 or so minutes, um, we, we could say that 3,600 minutes of very intimate memories are made. And that's just such an interesting thing about VR is because you have their full uh, immersion within the experience, we're actually like, you know, burning memories into people's brains. So that, uh, that is powerful. Not to mention visits from talk, top executives, all these key, key clients of Osram's that got to go through it from Mercedes and BMW and Audi and, and uh, you know, really understand intimately what, what Osram had on offer. Not to mention the scalability of the experience for future events as we kind of continue to take it on the road after CES uh, in a more kind of mobile format, to sort of, yeah, throughout the world. And yes, that is, that is it.